all right all right so welcome to the stem professional chat by stem care the purpose of this podcast is to bring career stories from stem professional which is science from the science technology engineering and mathematics uh, especially people who undertook non traditional career path or non conventional career path and we hope that their career journey discussion uh, here with us uh, will help stem community uh and especially the student and earlier career professional to craft their own career journey and learn learn from 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 these professional careers journeys uh, about nuances and and benefit of they keep taking those career choices so today um pawan upadhyay joining with my colleague dr mansi and our guest for today is dr rohan kamath uh dr rohan is a phd in molecular virology from actr tatra memorial center mumbai uh he w- currently works as a head for research and development at immune therapeutics in bangalore india and today he is joining with us to share his career journey uh from stem uh to to the to the entrepreneurship and now leading a a, a laboratory at, at a prominent organization so welcome dr rohan we are happy to have you uh, in our virtual studio today thank you pawan and thank you mansi it's always good to speak to colleagues uh, and friends all the time um, and tell them about how my journey is to learn from our um, mistakes and the good things that we've done i'll put it that way so uh, i really appreciate the effort that is put down by you guys and um, i think it is a very important uh, point that you've got now that people should know about how to choose their career paths and what is Uh, uh what helps them um, get to the right track okay so um i'll take you through my journey and um i'll tell you the points which are very critical where you can take decisions um and or prepare for the upcoming uh, decision right so um uh, i started my phd at um actrek and dr robins lab or which was then called the virology department and um one thing that was really uh, helpful in me to choose my career path today is our lab's focus itself so our lab was heavy into translational research um my boss had made this hiv western blot kit uh, first of its kind made in india from the indian sub population which was tech transfer to a company called j mitra i think from delhi we were making uh, there was a project in the lab which was focused on making the uh, hpv vaccine very much like uh, the gardasil so we were making virus like particles and a offshoot of that project was also to um, make um, an elisa kit to detect hpv infection which was till then not available in the market uh, then came uh, the project which i worked on which was basically we had a lot of hiv isolates in the lab being a virology lab being an hiv lab and uh, we had an hiv 2 isolate Uh, which is a little difficult to find as a standalone isolate because typically you have hiv1 and 2 co infections so we had one exclusive hiv2 isolate from which um, i think two seniors of mine started making a, a lentiviral vector for gene delivery and that's where i plugged in in the system and uh, my job was to uh, you know find you in the vector uh, prove its efficacy and then the eventually the string of juniors which came beyond me uh used it for various applications um, and proved its might in simple words um during that course of phd right when we were working when the vector was ready something that happened was that uh, the, at that time lentiviral vectors were not so commercially easily available um uh, you, you need a bsl2 facility you still need a bsl2 facility to make them but a bsl2 facility was not so common in um all the research institutes at least the smaller ones close to uh, around us so we had a lot of collaborations from uh, you know my uh, from different places like ngc pune uh, iisc where people were collaborating with us because we could make very good lentiviral vectors for them and that was my first you know a uh, bulb glow in my mind that well um, they come to us because we have a skill set and uh, what we got in lieu was publications so that that sort of struck a chord that well today it's generating a publication tomorrow maybe it can generate some money so that was one first bit and i realized that and with this whole translational thing somewhere in my phd 
pretty much very early just about second year i was very clear that i wanted to join a company now this is where i insist on everybody to think in the process of the phd um what you want to do now um if you don't know what you want to do figure out what you don't want to do which is which sort of makes your life a little easier so i was very clear that i did not want to get into academics not because i disliked it because it is a different sort of a responsibility that i observed yeah. as my uh, principal investigator my guide my mentor dr robin and all the others that i saw it's not only about doing science it's about being a mentor okay so all of us know of pis who are purely principal investigators and not mentors all they do is get science done from you and um uh, you in the lieu get a phd a bunch of publications you you booted out you move to the next process you are under the same process so you have not been mentored anywhere yes. okay in this whole process and that basically makes you a super qualified excellent uh, scientist but not somebody who can again mentor right so that part of mentoring i realized that was not my piece of cake i was not ready to take up responsibility of being a, a mentor and i was not sure at that time whether can i take grad students mentor them into better scientists or tomorrow right sign a better scientist doesn't qualify somebody who publishes in fantastic papers but just does good science and imparts knowledge to uh, the student society and so on and so forth right um so that's one thing which i sort of got a little clarity on that i did not want to do get stay in academics and then obviously my path was to uh, navigate through to find a uh, you know company job at some point of time uh i was about to wrap up my phd um i visited ncbs and i was fascinated i was looking at options to do my post doc and i was before fascinated by neurobiology at that time i happened to uh, get into a neurobiology lab and um in ncbs and um, it was uh, fantastic they were doing a lot of behavioral biology electrophysiology something which i had never done so i got very impressed and happy and well the next thing i knew i was here doing a post doc for 3 years so i did a lot of molecular biology a lot of lot of cell signaling in my post doc uh, trying to study uh, the effects of chronic stress um, in a particular brain region called the basolateral amygdala so there are two regions the amygdala and the hippocampus which play a role in emotion um, and uh, how stress affects this was what i was trying to study and it was a good three years spent understanding uh, signaling doing molecular biology um but then also i realized that neurobiology is not something that i can do in uh, india and that gets me to my second thought process that all of you have to put through is um you are getting your phd from some place it may be in india the us europe wherever it is right um especially for people who getting who are getting their phds in india think whether you really want to go um abroad for a post doc and um that uh, there are a lot of pros and cons to such kind of a thought process um there are family matters that may keep you uh held up back home especially the pandemic has taught us uh more value of being away from family because the pandemic has really kept us away from family i being in bangalore couldn't meet my parents back in bombay for all year right um and i can understand a lot of you are also stuck um and that problem has happened so there are a lot of things so figure out whether you want to go abroad yes or no don't follow the rat race just because my seniors went through i should also go through uh, not necessary i was possibly the first post doc from phd student from actrec who decided to not go to us for a post doc and do a post doc in india at in 2010 when i joined ncbs as a post doc we were possibly a handful of us okay because nobody nobody stayed back in india for a post doc then uh, today i can see there are a lot of numbers increasing because you have good fellowships and that sort of helps you think also because there's a part of uh, doing a post doc uh, abroad uh, which is nothing to do with science but also helps you earn some good piece of money right because our salaries at least at that time and even i'm pretty sure now are not so prolific that you end up saving to buy a home and settle down and blah 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 so that's one factor to consider that people do think of going to the us europe 
because they get to earn in dollars, uh, euros, pounds, save some, send some money back home if they have an obligation. And that helps. I won't deny that. So uh, in my path, I decided that I wanted to stay back in India. And um, uh, yeah, so uh, in my choice, I decided to stay back in India uh, because I had my reasons. And then I got a postdoc from NCBS for three years. Uh, and when I was telling you that, at the three-year point of my postdoc when my fellowship was getting over, I decided, okay, now it's time to move on to the next career uh, move. And in that whole course, that, that the part which I told you some time back about viral vectors being of commercial value was still there. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we did was, uh, me and a batchmate and a very close friend of mine, Shikan, who's now in Australia, we decided that let's let's see how we can start a small company. And in the process, uh, Department of Biotech has a arm called BIRAC, B-I-R-A-C, uh, Biotech Industry Research, something something council, and they fund industry research. Okay, they they fund they fund companies to do research. They fund people to commercialize their ideas. Okay, uh, and not only publish papers. Uh, so they have something called as a biotech ignition grant, which was a seed fund of around 50 lakh rupees. So you wrote up a project which had commercial value. They gave you the money. You had an option to incubate or you could uh, uh, incubate in an incubator if you are a new company. Alternatively, as a company, apply for the grant and commercialize that product. So we, uh, we wrote up that grant. We were lucky to get that. And uh, that sort of sowed the seed for our company called Viravex. And Viravex was basically a short form for viral vectors. So we got going there. We use that 50 lakhs to fund uh, research, get some assets, build some assets in the company. We got a following grant of, I think, another 50 lakh rupees. We got a state government grant of 35 lakh rupees. So we got a crore and a half odd uh, in grant money from different places run the company and we also started generating revenues by the side. Now uh, this went on for a good three and a half, four years time point and um, for all different reasons we decided to sort of uh, not proceed uh, that way and the primary reason why it was getting difficult to go um, and continue with the company was a lack of funding um, and it was a, a sort of, we couldn't scale up our processes and when you say scale up, you want to jump a leap. You cannot take small steps in a company because employees don't stay with you long. If you don't pay them competitive salaries, uh, you need to make your own salaries and start saving. So with all different reasons, uh, but on an extremely good note with everybody around by paying everybody's bills and salaries, we close shut shop. And in the due, and in that process of four years, right, something that happened amazing was I could build a very good network. And that's something that I will stress on a lot, that please build your network. Um, speak to people, connect with them on LinkedIn, write emails to them, have quick calls with them, have discussions about what should we do ahead of, can you help us? And that's what I did. I networked with people in the due course. And I'm not talking of people who are a couple of years older to me. I'm talking of people who are way senior, right? They were heading organizations. They were heading R&D functions or even HR. I, I, through my network, I managed to get to those kind of people. And um, through that process, I managed to get uh, interviewed uh, for the current position. Um, Iminil was just forming at that time. Uh, uh, nothing was in place. It was an idea and a company registered uh, by the founders. And I happened to interview. I was, I think, the third person to get interviewed. And uh, well, the next thing I knew, I was hired for the job. Um, it took almost a month and a half for us to find a place to establish um, uh, our setup. Uh, that process started off slowly. Uh, it, this was June of 2019 that I, April of 2019 that I shut shop with Viravex. June was the time when we started this. Um, I started this current journey. And as of December, we actually had our labs ready. COVID sort of delayed everything. So I had the beautiful time of setting up uh, uh, a facility with my whole team. I mean, I was not responsible for anything but my function and my lab. But it is amazing to work 
in a place where you are uh, so for for a change this time immunil being a well funded company i could buy uh, a, a beautiful flow cytometer that i wanted a beautiful uh, everything that i wanted and that was fun to set up a uh, kickass lab uh, and now we are functioning and doing experiments right so uh, that's that's the journey which came from starting from a phd to know that i want wanted to do a uh, get into the company i did not want to be in academics to give entrepreneurship a um, try and attempt which taught me a lot and which helped me build my rock solid network as of now in india um spent some time uh, with uh, very good mentors uh, who directed me well uh, and there were ups and downs right i mean when i was shutting shop with my company it wasn't easy uh, we used to have sleepless nights to figure out how am i going to tell the people uh where is my next salary going to come from where is their next salary going to come from will i get a job tomorrow so it, it was a difficult time but uh your mentors help you they 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 tell you and i'm talking of fairly senior people right they tell you ron this happens it's okay kind of a thing so so that is where it was i mean today i lead a function um, and we are I, I, just a quick uh, we we keep on looking at people to hire okay so Uh, feel free to get in touch with us when you feel like if there's an opportunity. So, Immunil Immunil Therapeutics, right? It's a company founded by Siddharth Mukherjee, um, Kiran Mazumdar Shah, and uh, Push Parmar, who's an investor. We have a very good uh, in seed money coming from philanthropic um, people. Uh, a person like Dev Shetty has invested a lot of high-profile people, and um, our sole aim is to. <clears throat> do um, affordable cellular therapy cellular immunotherapy in india and our current focus is scar t cell therapy so we've started and we are a, a company which is clinical in nature so we start at r and d function where we start with novel binders we develop therapies and we take them right till clinic and uh, we're situated in the narayana uh, health city uh, where uh, patients are treated right one floor below where we are situated so that sort of makes our life easy but uh, that's what immunal therapeutics is about it's a end to end company a clinical company and um, feel free to get in touch with us i'll pause here and let you guys ask questions i think i still spoke a lot so over to you guys perfect that was uh, amazing just to i mean i've known you for many years but i didn't know many of the aspects of your career journey uh but i do have a couple of questions so one thing that you mentioned and i resonated it Uh, mm-hmm. with that thought that one of the reasons some of us don't want to be uh, the academic pi's is uh, not because we don't like science or we can't do science or we cannot train people mm-hmm. to do science but this is this additional mentoring responsibility that you are not sure of uh, but the the counter to that argument is when you are running a company you are also responsible for a team of people you are still uh, sort of their shoulder to have yeah. support for uh, so how do you differentiate mentorship required for a academic setting versus industry setting do you see i, I really i really like this question and it uh, i i really appreciate that you get this uh, on this forum right so as uh, um, when you are training somebody to get a phd right you are um, teaching them basic science uh, do techniques uh, fancy stuff good stuff Uh, but also comes about um, training them to think about how to do science independently tomorrow okay i mean when they get out of uh, the phd lab with the degree as a postdoc what do they see as a postdoc you are given a project and say execute it yeah tell us what you want we'll get it for you execute it sure in a phd lab typically a mentor tells you do this experiment i feel this way work out this is the way we should approach it because i know it will work this is i have studied more about it from you blah 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 right now we cut to a company it's slightly different that first of all it's not a open ended journey your focus is are very crisp you are developing a therapy okay so the goal is to develop for example today my one of my goals is to develop a particular target x car t therapy now in that process i have a team i have a team of phd's uh, Uh, i mean people who've done phd's postdocs have team people have people who are masters or freshers everybody and our sole focus is to look at that therapy and develop that 
Now, any deviation from it, some, you know, I do an experiment and I say, oh, you know what? Oh, this is awesome. Let's follow this lead and take a left and see what happens. So that left doesn't happen in the company. Okay. What happens is you take a left, pause it, see if it is worth and uh, worth investing in it and maybe get a publication out of it. But don't take that left. You stay on your path. And in this process, your mentorship process also is slightly different. That you first mentor people to stay on the path. Mm-hmm. Okay. It is not, uh, and um, it, it's starting off slowly in India where you have industry postdocs, industry PhDs, so that mentoring happens. Mentoring to continue to do good science doesn't change, whether it's an academic setup or a, 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 you know, a company setup. Your focuses are different, and hence what happens is that in an academic lab, you you can, it's, it's, it's a, like a, a network you can go any way, direction you want and take your science and uh, pub work but in this case because the, because the focus is very sh- uh, razor sharp hmm. your mentoring is also razor sharp it is first deliver we, uh, we do uh, at the very early stage companies do not hire super freshers because they don't have time to train Right. So yeah. now, now a little bit into now my next set of hiring will be freshers where I can train them. But the first set of people purely execute. You execute, you deliver, then you and uh, we as Emil have worked in a very different way. We we don't have a person to do analyzer. We don't have a person to run a gel. We have a person to do a project X. Mm. I, I my one of my employees has a project X. One of my employees has a team member has a project Y, a project Z. And they execute the projects completely. They take help from each other. Okay. What I do as a function head is I overlook their activity. I ensure that they don't fight amongst each other, <laughs> as I always say. Um, and they cooperate together. So mentoring is not much different, Mansi. I agree with what you say. But the way mentoring is done is slightly different. It's focused. It's right. focused to right. deliver what a company wants. Right. Story and right. I think it's, uh, as, I'm, as I'm hearing, it's more about in academia, it's more about exploring and mentoring it's is a, helping you to explore yeah, things explore. that might be beyond just your research yeah. project, project. But yeah, because yeah. it's an industry, it's a uh, it's a result driven thing. It's a so, deliverable based process, which is a product typically a right. therapy at the most. So everybody so, sort of wo- working towards one goal. Yeah. So and say. nobody lets you not explore. And that's a big misconception that people have. Okay. okay? One of our uh, recent employees left because she felt that uh, way early, and she felt that uh, no, no, I don't think we'll be exploratory in uh, nature. I said you cannot be exploratory on day one in a company, especially Absolutely. for a company which is as uh, young as ours. Mm-hmm. You join a no artist, they let you explore like anything because they have the funds, yeah. right? So for here, I said it's a give and take policy. First you deliver, then the company will let you explore yeah. because they need to have trust in what you say that you can deliver. And you run on you run on a very tight budget in a company. Mm-hmm. Every rupee is accounted for. Just and to add, just, yeah, I agree. Uh, just to add one point, I think what yeah. I see the difference. The academia has hierarchy labeled mentoring and a lot of power dynamics. But in industry, those power dynamics and hierarchy is kind of diluted to an extent that if if you're not comfortable with a mentor or a boss, you can talk to your HR and switch over. You can do things the way you want yep. to do. But in academia, yep. you are bound by the rope in your <laughs> neck that you cannot, you don't have a choice. <laughs> what do you yeah, think? Yeah, we about? don't we don't have unions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. It's very uh, yeah, I, I so I always I have this thought, you know, that I always say that you know what does a, a typical academic institution require? An HR manager. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's it, not it's not out of the blue idea, right? I mean, it's everybody is going through the same problems. Why not? Yeah. Why not try out something that right. the corporate structure has already shown right. that it works? Yeah, it works exactly. <laughs> so yeah, but, I understand that power. It's very uh, what he says is true, and yeah. well, that's the way it is. So I have a, another question. I think it is ne- next to uh, near to your postdoc career, which you undertook. Uh, kind of, it was a I would say a kind of challenging decision mm-hmm. at that time, given the peer pressure comes from doing a postdoc in India and people not mm-hmm. really look at uh, as a very kind of, I would say even within a peer pressure, there are a lot of pressure comes from PI or colleagues. So 
would you like to tell us about uh, what are the uh, kind of commonalities or differences for doing postdoc? Because now you have worked there, you have a friend working internationally. Yeah, yeah. So how was your experience postdoc in India? And, and what do you see the, the benefit uh, and also the, the cons, the, the pros and cons? Uh, so, uh, so first things first. I feel there's a uh, there's a big difference, and one thing that even today I ha I is missing on my um, CV resume experience is uh, um, is a stint uh, not in India, and I call it not in India because wherever you go beyond Indian borders, right, um, Europe, America, Australia, uh, wherever. You learn to uh, work in a cross cross cultural um, uh, environment, and that teaches you a lot more than what uh, happens in India. Because um, in India, you are in the same kind of an atmosphere all the while, absolutely same people with same mentality, same thoughts, uh, same uh, uh, what can I say? Similar backgrounds. The the risks which all of us. Face as Indians is the same. The yeah, everything is same. I'm, I'm talking slightly beyond science. Okay, so what happens is you don't ever get the exposure of uh, oh, this is how you think about it. It's very interesting. I could never think about it from that perspective, right? And that trickles down to your work, right? It's not science now; it's work, <clears throat> and it can be anything. So it, I think it's very valuable that people do get an experience um, uh, beyond India because it teaches you a lot. It makes you more flexible uh, when you work with different types of people uh, you know and and that has a big value staying back in india um, uh, it it keeps you in the same rut same thought processes and i see that thought process is different uh, in friends of mine who've been there uh, even for a very short stint of like two years i see that uh, they look at certain things in a very different way uh, and which is really appreciable so that's part which is missing uh, in my uh, experience, and I uh, also encourage people that if you are not able to do their uh, go go to the US or Europe or wherever Asia, Australia for a postdoc, try to find small sabbatical time points of two months, three months to get yourself trained on a particular technique or concept, so that you get a flavor of you know what happens out there. Uh, in terms of science per se, I don't feel um, yes. There is better quality science happening out there in the Europe and Americas purely because of sheer good funding, better. But I don't think India lacks on it now. If I look at the funding level in India, in premier institutes, uh, we have enough funding. I mean, I had nothing less as an access in NCBS as my friends who were at NIH or Harvard or wherever it is. I had everything, absolutely everything. So, so that's I, the thing. Yep. I think uh, the other question that comes is, was it easy for you to make network to transition then from your postdoc to, you know, a startup world because you were doing postdoc in India? Like for me, uh, I have, I have yeah. transitioned out of this Indian education mm -hmm. ecosystem for a long time. Yep. And I really yep. don't have any connections, so to say, when it comes to, you know, yep. setting up a business. <clears throat> yeah. So maybe that was a good, good point that you stayed back there. <laughs> It does, it does. And I'll tell you how it makes a difference. So uh, Pawan spent his, Pawan got his PhD in India, right? Um, what really disconnects one from India is when you get your PhD also abroad. And you also don't even know how the science happens back in India. Then, okay. I feel there's a lot of value when you get your PhD here, because mm -hmm. if you want to come back particularly, right. then you need to know how does science happen in India. Okay. Prior primers used to take one week to come. Antibodies still take four weeks to come. How much time does an antibody take at your end? Possibly a week, right? Yeah. And in COVID times, I uh, uh, fetal bovine serum, FBS, there's a waiting period for two to three months at times for me to, so that is the level of planning you have to do when you do science in India. Right. And um, that helps. Now, mm -hmm. coming to the part about networking, um, I think that was, I was, absolutely lucky to be in the lab that I did my PhD because uh, Robin is a very uh, he, he even today he networks well at that time also he used to network well so 
if i wanted to speak to somebody i just had to tell robin ki sir can you can you get me in touch with xyz hmm. he'll ensure that he can and that was something really excellent coming to do a post doc in uh, bangalore and sort of getting a whiff of what is happening around um, it was a little you have to be i cannot use the word you have to be courageous to cross the borders and speak to people and network with them uh, fortunately uh, we started i think me and a couple of people started this thing as a career day in um, ncbs the first career day which was uh, to look at uh, jobs beyond academia mm. and we did that because we wanted to network so if if all of us couldn't go to one person we yeah. said let's get everybody on one forum and we got a lot of people and that first blood is all that you need once you get connected all you need to do is like tap that person shoulder and say can you connect me to person y and right. trust me people help you in this field or <laughs> i can i can vouch that people will how big ever that person is if you write a honest and earnest email saying that i can you help me connect with somebody so go and so they will do it with a, when you give a reason don't say hey can you connect me to so and so give a reason why Sure. they might connect to somebody else as well so it helps i agree with you being in india helped because i could network easily hmm. uh, because i knew more people here in the due course of my phd post doc and then if you are sitting in the us use a platform like linkedin and your friends and colleagues back in india to network is all i will suggest right so going to uh, the trans- first transition that you made from your post doc to mm-hmm. a startup yeah. Um, yeah. many would not dare to take that plunge and you know uh, having an idea about you know oh i have this thing that is working out and everybody is uh, or there is sup- supposedly a demand for it and then let's make you know make a value based product out of it and market mm-hmm. it or make like a wet lab uh, lab based research setup yeah. is still stays an idea for many people so how yeah. does that idea translate into actual uh, you know getting a grant or a funding and then yeah. running yeah. the show so uh, uh like me there are lots every single year who go through the same process a lot of them fail a lot of them majority of them fail uh, a slight <laughs> small number are able to get through and keep on climbing the ladder right so uh, if you look at uh, Uh, why it's it's purely with the factor that well i don't mind trying it out okay at that time I, I, i'll put it that way there were lesser obligations on my head to take that risk as well and i'm being very honest about it that if you have lesser obligations you wherever it is in whichever stage you are at you you can take certain risk based on what is your current status quo obligations financial personal and everything so that's one part um i had um, no i have a wife who at that time was having a continuous stable job which was our primary source of income and that is what i am saying that you have to plan it that way i could take a risk at that time that's why um, and uh, that makes a big difference now um, if you look at uh, uh, if 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 you see a value in whatever you are doing as research that you think it has commercial value um, uh, spe- start talking to people and figuring out just about two months back there is this girl um from ncb as a grad student um and she works in a very different way. she worked in a lab which works on honey bees behavior kind of thing but she came and spoke to me saying that uh you know what i have a feeling that this antibody business is a very challenging business can you help me understand the antibody space I, whatever i could i did i connected to a, her to a bunch of people i knew and we did a couple of uh, calls right and she like you know i have a friend who's into computational thing and we want to resolve this problem of uh, finding the right antibodies um uh and uh, we have a plan towards it and the reason why she came across that problem right is when she was working she was looking at uh, finding an antibody for one particular protein which she couldn't find and she finally dug it out from one lab and they were kind enough to share a little bit and she realized that you know what she identified a problem and she also had a potential solution hmm. um she and her friend started off a small company 
देर समथिंग कॉल्ड एज अंटरप्रनर फर्स्ट करके फोरम विच इज अ ग्लोबल फोरम एंड दे हैव नाउ अ बैंगलोर चैप्टर वेर यू सबमिट इज आइडिया टू देम इफ यू विन यू गेट सम मनी यू हेल्प दे हेल्प यू इनकूबेट दे एक्चुअली गॉट थ्रू द होल प्रोग्राम एंड दे आर ऑन दर वे टू ट्राई टू सी इफ दे कैन कमर्शलाइज द थॉट्स so what is important is to um, uh, when you it, it it's not a very difficult decision or a very courageous decision because if you think that there is a commercial value to it um, and you and you are you need to have that tiny bit of passion yaar try karte hain i don't mind trying it out right. and if you have that it doesn't take much effort you have you uh, there are government grants there competitive in nature there are people ready to invest i know of other friends of mine who um, there uh, it's a company called four base care very good friends of mine uh, and they are not young freshers out of some somewhere the one guy had other uh, earlier company but not that they were rich they have this concept that genomics they in, they are integrating genomics data and patient care okay so they have a app which is for the doctors for the patient they have genomics integrated Yeah, and they managed to raise two million dollars recently after just uh, I think two years of working purely on the thought process. So it is if you believe in what you have <coughs> it has a commercial value. It's not very difficult to chase and get into this uh, entrepreneurship journey. Uh, the biggest mistake that happens in that process is that um, you may feel it may sell and. I know there is a customer. Why? Why not? 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 and annual expense behind running a company on paper so even today our uh, label is alive we've not closed it officially but i spend i spend every year on my domain name my accountant my uh, paperwork to keep the paper company alive on paper file taxes even if it is zero in nature uh, and that was a totally different ball game to learn about the administrative part of running a company and uh, so it it takes a substantial amount of planning and it takes a lot of your day time also also when you're working because you have to spend your time doing administrative work you have to have and your audits with your uh, accountant uh, you have to give your statement of expenditure to your grants because they are government grants right they need every rupee spent mm-hmm. under that section and a slight deviation they start to uh, who asks you to spend more on manpower this is only for instruments and so on so it's it's not easy it takes a lot of planning i should say that yeah i agree i mean <laughs> entrepreneurship is <laughs> it's a game you know uh, whether you win or you lose both ways you learn from it and i think yes. that's where i want to kind agree of, i absolutely agree with that part yeah kind of now helping to build a bigger company so <laughs> yeah pretty much i look at i see my learnings from four years of running a running a extremely lean company uh, my budgets are the least the first time i gave my budget to my boss my boss was like this do less i said trust me we can work on this <laughs> but what i got in leo is i got a new hood i got a new microscope i i i said i'll reduce my consumable cost but give me these things which i still need and he is happy to oblige why because um, i know how to run run uh, you know run a lean company with a moderate cash flow hmm. and these are very important things yeah uh, you in an academic lab especially when you spend time in place like nih or you know those premium organizations it's crazy because you never know how much you are spending right uh, my colleague who came back from the us from a very good lab in ut southwest uh, are ye to hum aise hi khareedte the i said yeah yahan pe aise hi nahi hota yahan pe uh, i I'll give an example a cost of a flow cytometer uh, what i spend uh we spend around 60 lakhs on it right uh, a cost to an academic institution of the same thing is around 30 to 40 lakhs because there are no taxes oh, and the same thing goes with all the consumables so it's a big difference in cost and that makes a substantial difference and which you are not aware as a academician that's why <laughs> sorry i agree so, yeah so 
I have another question about networking strategies and many mm -hmm. of the postdocs and PhD in India struggle to go and ask things in different sector, like especially mm -hmm. in industry, right? They can yeah. talk in academia within their own network, but when it comes to yeah. going out and talking, they don't know how to do it. So what advice you would be the strategies to network, to reach out? Uh, and if I people. can also add, you yeah. have an experience uh, of talking to, let's say, potential investors or yeah. you know, people completely out of this academic yeah. setting. So maybe you can give us tips of how one can learn <laughs> how to talk to such people. Yeah. So, so two two part question. The first to answer for one's part, um, it's a general networking question, right? So, uh, I always have on my Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, whatever it is, one tab open for LinkedIn. I'm just there on LinkedIn 24 seven, just something is popping up. I see somebody posting something. I see somebody who's whom I want to connect with. So I'm constantly networking there on LinkedIn. Uh, and that's become my Facebook, which I was used to be sometime back on, right? Or I am at home on Facebook, but on, at work, my LinkedIn page is always open. Um, so what you do is when you want to network with anybody, um, if the person is much higher up in the uh, se sector, it, there's no harm in still writing. Uh, it's not, there's no harm, harm. You can still approach the person with this tiny note on LinkedIn except that, you know, I am so-and-so, I would like to connect with you for so-and-so. Don't say I want to connect with you. I want to connect with you for ABC or so-and-so. It's very important because why do you want to, uh, it, it's like, you know, going to old school days. Can you, can I make friendship with you kind of thing? Don't do that now. So, so be a little mature and ask that I want to connect with you because I'm looking at getting into the corporate, uh, you know, swing in some time, they will understand why are you trying to connect with them. If they don't respond, a lot of people do not respond on LinkedIn. They are occupied. They don't look at LinkedIn. Use your network to connect with them. Um, and uh, use, once you connect, drop emails. Uh, very short, crisp emails saying that, you know what, I would like to connect with you for so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. Done. Uh, can you help me with this? Like build that, have conversations over email, which may span over weeks. Okay. Don't, don't, don't expect a day to day, day to day conversation and suddenly be, ha ah, I know you well. So give it time. You can build that network process. Um, that's one part to it. So, so spend time on LinkedIn people uh, and say, can you help me connect with so-and-so for so-and-so and don't know, obviously expect a positive response every time. Uh, but it generally works. In my experience, it generally works. Uh, you have to put your case forward, as simple as that. And then people are happy to connect and help. So that's one part of it. Pawan, I hope I answered your question. Uh, or if you want more details, I can help you happily. Now, Mansi, with when it respect to talking to people sort of outside that scientific bubble, right? Maybe investors or something else. It, I won't say it's as easy as just opening up a LinkedIn and speaking to them because they come, they, they sit in a very different level. They, they, they are looking at networks only to, uh, to do their job at first point of time, invest, look at things. But if you simply want to connect with an investor, right? An investor, if you go to any of the investor companies um, on the, uh, so uh, now what happens is in the, what I've learned uh, at least in India, that there is a very tiny portion of investors who are into healthcare. Okay. Very tiny portion who are into healthcare, biotech, pharma, very tiny. Most of them are tech oriented, IT app and e-commerce kind of things. So that makes your job a little easy that you just have to find that patch of investors and that, I can sort of help you. You will find them. Uh, just Google up biotech investors in India and you will find a couple of names and then go on their LinkedIn pages. You will find a whole network whom they're connected with. So when you find them, right, try to connect with them uh, uh, for, again, if you want to speak to them that, you know, I want to learn this process. How do investments happen? There are, because in that investor company also, there's a huge hierarchy. There are the entry level analysts who are simply 
crunching numbers on an Excel sheet to tell their boss that, you know what, I think this company is doing well. And then the boss goes and figures out whether he wants to invest or not. Let's try to connect with them and w- walk up the ladder. It's not easy. I agree with you to go and speak to them immediately because what do you speak to them with is sort of happens. Right. The right. main problem lies in the vocabulary that we speak. Yes. Like, we yes, wa- we yes. speak from a scientific point and they are probably looking yeah. at every problem from a business point and they I are looking at they are looking at there is a problem you have a solution right can we make money out of that solution and who wants it who wants that product yeah that's right. so where so where you make money out of that solution that means you have identified a customer yeah. for it <laughs> yeah but but to generally connect with them is not uh, is not as easy as connecting with people in your same field Sure. So you may have to take a little bit extra effort to connect with them. Again, people's networks help at such time rather than direct networks. That's right. why. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So yep. this is amazing. We w- we wish we could continue this conversation. Maybe you can come back and do like part two of this series. But we are going to end up with... Uh, uh, this question is, we should have a second place if required where people post a lot of questions and you answer sure. them specifically. Yeah, that may absolutely. Be yeah, yeah, we can, we yeah. can definitely do that. But we are going to yeah. end with some uh, fun rapid fire questions. <laughs> uh, so uh, I know uh, you for a long time. So I have taken liberty to <laughs> draft a couple of those <laughs> uh, based on your personal likings and yeah. Yeah. passions. So you just have to quickly answer. What do you prefer? Mumbai summers or Bangalore summers? Bangalore summers. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's going uh, to start raining now soon. So I'm okay. just waiting for it. <laughs> uh, how about, uh, we know that you love pets and you mm-hmm. do have pets. So dogs or cats? I know the dogs. answer, but dogs? Dogs slowly getting cats as well. Our sister's got a cat. So, well, I realize they're not as mean as they feel like. <laughs> But yeah, given an option, you would go for dog. Any day, yep. Uh, travel or food? A travel and food. <laughs> A travel for food. I make it easy. <laughs> so in, in terms of food, what do you prefer? Barbecue mm-hmm. or vada pav? Both. Now in Bangalore, I only prefer vada pav because I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Bangalore has idli, sambal. Idli yeah. rice, no. rice. Yeah. A lot of rice variety. And dosha. Right, right. He couldn't stop saying rice, rice, rice because that is the way it is. <laughs> but it has its own great food. That's why. Yeah. And the last one, maybe we'll end on yeah. a little bit more professional choice. Uh, mm-hmm. Running your own startup or working for a big... Running your own startup. No second thoughts. Awesome. And it, 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 is, it is always a different kind of kick you get out of uh, running something if you're of your own. Because it is purely, um, it's just your own baby. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. your own baby as opposed to somebody's baby whom you are taking care of. I can walk away from my job tomorrow. Uh, but it, if it's my company, I cannot walk away from it. Because if I walk away, everybody walks away. As simple as that. So it, it's like any day, a cut above uh, the rest. So yes. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you just you just disproved your own statement early on in the interview that you were unsure about your mentoring cap- capabilities. I think you are amazing mentor, no matter which field you go into. So, it, so this is something which I, which has happened with time, right? It, 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 yeah. But to have that confidence on day one is it's a matter of Absolutely. choice. Some people do. I don't. Yeah. I, I develop. I'm I'm I I honestly mentor a lot of people now who are looking at career transitions because I've been here for a long time now. Right. And yeah. I just give it that to people that, you know what, I am I just know more people because I've been here for a long time. That's all. In the, in India, networking with people. So feel happy to get in touch with me. Uh, if you want connections, I'll try my best. Um, you guys have my email ID. Feel, feel com- comfortable to share it with the community if required. And I'm happy to help connect. I mean, I don't promise... Uh, that uh, I'll get you a job, but I'll try to be sure that <clears throat> I'll try my best to, uh, you know, your C- CV sits on the right table to be looked at at least. I'll just put it yeah. that way. That's a big, that's a big word in today's world, you know, to find yeah. people. And I think viewers should be really uh, privileged to, to hear you. And with that, we'll right. wrap it here. 
yes. and thank you so much thank for you. your time and then you know uh, and, and sharing a weekend with us <laughs> have, a have a good, good weekend. weekend thank you thank you for the time always happy